I'm here with Larry Logan, who is the CMO of Digimark uh, in the States. And uh, your technique, Digimark, what is that actually? Can you explain it a little bit? Sure. Probably the simplest way to explain it is to show you an example of some packaging. So everyone is familiar with the code on the back that is used for checkout. Yes. We take the same information, the global trade identification number, and we replicate that across all sides of the package. So this shows the density of the replication of all the codes, but it doesn't look anything like this. This is what it looks like. So to the eye, it's imperceptible, it's not visible. But at the front of store, this package and this original package will both check out the same way. Now the nice thing is it speeds up checkout because the cashier doesn't have to orient the package to see the code, but now also consumers can point at the package with their smartphone and get information about the product. But then the consumer must know that there is some information to, to get from the package. Sure. Uh, well, a couple of ways that are done. One is that uh, often the retailer will have a small symbol on the package that says the package is interactive. And also, this is part of a larger movement with GS1, which is the international standards body for UPC codes and EAN codes, for all those standards codes. So we've been working with them in the U.S. We recently announced in Germany that uh, Digimark barcode is coming to Germany. We'll be announcing other countries shortly. So this is really part of a larger standards movement, and therefore consumers will have more opportunities to understand that they can interact with the packaging. So this is sort of a uh, watermark then, or something like that? Uh, it's a field of digital watermarking. Uh, we are the pioneers and world leaders uh, starting in 1996. So we were originally with uh, Adobe and a Photoshop. Uh, since then, uh, we've worked with world currencies, so it's an international uh, company. Uh, but it's a form of digital watermarking with our special sauce. <laughs> and of course, you don't uh, you reveal how exactly it's done, but is it the printing method of what is going on here? Sure. Well, uh, I can share with you that basically what we're doing is taking the pixels in a digital file and ever so slightly changing those pixels in a way that is below your threshold of your ability to see that we've made that change. But a computing device, a smartphone or a front of store scanner, can make sense that there's been a very slight alteration that's changed. So computing devices can detect that change when our eyes can't. But do, do, you, do you print this at the same time as you printed the design of the package? Ah, yes. Uh, we, there's no special process. We're taking the same inks that would be printed normally we're using those inks that we change slightly in the digital file, kind of like a Photoshop plugin, and then it goes right on press, same as before. Any kind of press, uh, a Flexo, Reviewer, it makes no difference. So there are no special inks, no special printing process. But does it mean that the retailers need to have a special reader for this? Yes, the new scanners that are on the market today are photo scanners, they're optical scanners. The largest manufacturers are integrating Digimark into those scanners. So as retailers adopt the new scanners, then Digimark is built in uh, in order to do the scanning. So then it doesn't matter whether it's a visible barcode or an invisible barcode when it comes to the, to, to the retailer? Yes, the advantage for retailers is a much faster checkout so they can move more items per minute through the store. But think about self-checkout. So self-checkout can be so difficult trying to get the scanner to read, where now you just take a soft package, go like that, and it reads. And how, how much is this used today? I mean, uh, you said you're coming to Germany, but how, how much in the States, how much is used? Sure, well, we've made public announcements of some of the leading retailers in the United States and some of the leading brands. Uh, it's relatively new, only in the last couple of years and working with GS1. There'll be more announcements soon, but it takes a certain amount of time for brands to integrate into their packaging, and we respect the confidentiality uh, of our clients, uh, and so we don't make announcements until they uh, allow us to make announcements. But you still need a visible barcode for the logistic chain, so to say, because otherwise, I mean, if, if you need to read this somewhere during the transportation or whatever, then uh, I suppose you still need a visible barcode. Sure. Visible barcodes will be around for some period of time, but they're also an anachronism. They're an artifact from an earlier time when that's all that the technology could read. So going forward, 
the interest with brands and standards groups is less need for visible codes. For packaging, they take up important real estate. They take up important space that could be used more for brand messaging. So this is part of an ongoing movement that over time there's no reason to have visible codes in any way going forward. And this technique to print this, this is something that any packaging converter can do? It's not you that have to do it? or Correct. Uh, it's only one step in the pre-press process where the digital file, before it goes to the last proof, then it's simply uh, integrated into the design and then it goes on press just as before. So you, you will license the technique or the, the secrets yes. behind it? Yes. yes, so we provide the tools that allow either uh, a pre-press company or a converter or a printer to use the tools. Okay, and how has the interest been here on the, on the Congress this year? Uh, the show has been fantastic and uh, quite a few of the brands here we knew uh, we've been working with uh, in advance and also we're meeting many, many new potential clients. So we're very excited with the show. Okay, Larry, thank you very much. Thank you.